Welcome back to The Logic Dilemma. I am American Mike. From the Purple Mountain Majesties, from sea to shining sea, this is America the Beautiful. I'm glad you're joining me today. Joan, Shanghai, 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 159,000 billion dollars led. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was in foot him uh, foot, foot. The idea that um, Los Angeles and uh, and uh, um, uh, um, what am I doing here? For two reasons. One, to we haven't been able to communicate it in a way that is. Uh, um, let me say another way. That is our president, the president of the United States. Aren't we so proud of him? Wouldn't be fit to run a McDonald's restaurant, but yet he runs the United States of America. Again, I'm glad you're here. This is The Logic Dilemma, where we talk about the logical aspects of American politics. And sometimes... Thinking logically can get in the way of our emotions, and that's when it becomes a dilemma. And some, for some people, logic is a problem or a dilemma, something that we don't like. They don't like logic very much. We see that in politics every single day. Well, today we're going to talk about what it takes to be a dictator. We hear this word thrown around all the time. Dictator this, dictator that. Trump's going to be a dictator. Trump says he's going to be a dictator. What does that even mean? Is it even possible to have a dictator in America? I don't actually think it is possible. Some people think it is. Some people think Trump is that dictator. Our Vice President Domola Harris sure thinks so. Mr. Trump has challenged the president to debate him anytime, anywhere, any place. Will President Biden commit to debating Donald Trump? I haven't talked to the president yet about that, but I'll tell you something. Um, if you want to just look at the split screen to understand what's at stake. On the one hand, you've got Joe Biden, someone who is competent, who is principled, who has accomplished more than many presidents even hoped for, be it on infrastructure, on climate, on health care. And on the other side of that split screen, you've got the former president who glorifies dictators and has said he'll be a dictator on day one. Someone who has said that he will weaponize the Department of Justice against his political enemies. The split screen is clear. Should President Biden debate him, in your view? I, that's a choice that is going to be decided upon soon, and we'll keep you posted. Well, there's a lot to unpack in this. First off, did you hear her call the president competent? Hey, look, he may be a lot of things competent, he is not. We used to make fun of his BS back when he was vice president. And they kept having to hide him from the public. We would go months and months and months without seeing Joe Biden's face. Because every time he spoke, it was a disaster. And this was was years ago. And now, it's ten times worse. So first off, she calls him competent. This is why why we think Harris is dumb. Because you... Do they think that we don't see him, that we don't hear him, that we don't have any idea who this Joe Biden mysterious fellow is that she keeps speaking about? We know who he is. We see him every day. Competent, he is not. Anyway, she goes on to say he is friendly with dictators. I'm assuming she's talking about Putin. We'll get back to that. She says he's going to be a dictator, and he admitted it, on day one. 
Okay. And then she said something very interesting. She accused Donald Trump of wanting to weaponize the Justice Department against his political enemies. Now, Trump has mentioned investigations that will take place that do make sense. But if I was sitting back and watching from afar, I would think that the Biden administration are the one that is that that are weaponizing the Justice Department against their political opponents. Obviously. Trump can't do anything without some BS trial hanging over his head. You think that's you think that's because Trump's just a, a bad guy? We know the fraud case that is bankrupting him is fake. We know that. I mean, just listen to Kevin O'Leary. He has said many, many times, this is the Shark Tank guy. This is how real estate is done. And now you have attorney generals and judges wanting to seize Trump property. Well, that sounds American. No, it doesn't at all. To seize Trump property because the because all Trump did was take out loans with the bank and pay them back. The same thing we all do. He didn't do anything wrong. In fact, every single bank that he borrowed from testified on his behalf. But yeah, it wasn't good for the good enough for the Democrats. We have to get Trump. We have to ruin him. We want to ruin him. I just want you to know. See, the district attorney in New York, I can't remember her name. I, I don't even care. And the judge, I don't know his name either. I don't even care. We've talked about it in previous episodes of this podcast, but honestly, they're thinking that they're going to go down in history. I'm going to be the one that took down Donald Trump. Nobody is going to remember you, and no one is going to care. So good luck with that. And, and just like uh, Shark Tank Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful said, the district attorney will leave. The judge will leave. And we'll go on with this case impacting the way that we invest in real estate moving forward for impacting negatively. You see, this case has ruined investing in the future, in, in commercial real estate. It's a scary thing. It never should have seen trial. And nor, it never should have been decided by one man. One man that says, oh, by the way, Donald Trump owes the government. The government had nothing to do with any of these deals, by the way. This state of New York, he owes us almost a half a billion dollars. You know, it's interesting. I've been hearing a lot of people talk about Trump. He's, he's not able to pay the half a billion. Well, the liberals... And the Trump haters out there are all over this. They love this. Oh, I, th I thought he was like a billionaire. This is what I hear. All these articles from the liberal media. I thought he was like a billionaire. And if I was like a billionaire, I would just write a check. This is what I hear. And it's constant over and over that's my that's my liberal voice that's my liberal voice i would just like write a check because i'm like a billionaire this is what they're trying to say we all know that trump lost a lot of wealth being the president of the united states
In fact, he has come out in the past and said he's lost half his wealth in being president. That makes everyone and all of his followers like him even more. He's given up everything he has to ensure that America is great. And it is. All this talk about how bad of a president Donald Trump was. He was like such a bad president. It's not true. He was actually really good. His immigration policies were great. His foreign policies were great. We've been over this on this program. All of them. Just sit, just watch the video of him sitting with all of the leaders in the Middle East. And they're sitting at the table signing peace treaties. Go, go look it up. He's sitting there with the Middle East signing peace treaties for the first time in many, many decades. 60 years or so. And now we're at war. <laughs> you see, Trump is actually pretty good on the economy. Everything was great. Now our inflation is so high that our cost of living in America doesn't match our wages. That doesn't make any sense. That, that wasn't there with Trump. Anyway. So, all right. So Harris is sitting there telling us, oh, He's a, he's a dictator, and he loves dictators. And I was saying, I, 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 I'm assuming she means Putin. He's friendly with people around the, around the world because you don't want to make enemies. But he had, his, he had his thumb on Putin. You think Putin would have ever invaded Ukraine if Donald Trump was president? Not a chance. Not a chance. And being friendly with other dictators, okay. Well, that's one thing that Biden can never say. You name one, one leader in a different country who's friends with Biden. Just one. One leader that you can see, he, they, they, are, they are friends None. Biden doesn't go anywhere and do anything. He has to be to the sizzler by four, four o'clock for the early bird special, and then he's got to get to bed. You see, he doesn't have time to go to all of these countries and learn about all of the different leaders. You don't, there are no, he's not friends with any of the leaders around the world. In fact, you remember back, um, it was year, years ago, right when Biden was in office, we were low on oil. And because Biden stopped, in the first hundred days in office, he stopped all of the oil drilling across America. Well, not all of it. I, I know, it wasn't all of it. But enough of it that it made an impact. That's why our gas prices have been high, people, by the way. Because we've been dependent on foreign oil, more so than we were with Trump. So anyway, we'll talk about that a little bit later in this, this program. But when we needed oil, do you remember when he tried to contact the Saudis and they wouldn't even take his call? They wouldn't even take his call. The Saudis were like, you know what? I don't even want to talk to that guy. Again, you think that would have flown with Trump? Never. Of course, he didn't beg for oil from foreign people. He, Trump has always been, hey, we have it here. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to sit here and be dependent on people who hate us. I love that about him. Anyway, 
So, yeah, Trump has been friendly with some of the major powers across the world. It's strategic. That's what you have to be. Remember, Trump has done business all over the world with people he doesn't even like. But strategy tells you that you have to work with them. Now, Harris was talking about comments that uh, when, when she says he sympathizes with dictators or something like that. Well, she's talking about comments he's made about Putin and now Putin's smart. He, he has, he's made comments about Putin being smart in invading Ukraine. Do you know why? Why would Trump say Putin was smart? Well, look at the timeline. Obviously, he was smart because, and this was what Trump said. Putin's smart because he waited until America was at its weakest point with its weakest leadership. That's why he invaded Ukraine. And I have to agree, that is smart. If you were going to invade a country, you would wait till America was weak. That's how it works. That doesn't, now saying that, oh, wow, that was smart. That doesn't mean I agree with the invasion of Ukraine. Obviously not. Doesn't mean I side with Putin. Doesn't mean I want to go out on a date with him. It doesn't mean anything like that. Uh, Trump did the same thing about Hitler. He has said, well, Hitler, you know, talking about his intelligence. Okay, guess what? Hitler was no dummy. That doesn't mean I agree with anything he did or stood for. Obviously. But he not only achieved what he was able to achieve, he was able to convince people to go along with him. How? Have you ever thought of this? Yeah, Hitler was crazy. But how in the world was he able to convince all of his leadership in the military to go along with his plans? That just blows my mind. It's like you're watching, thinking of, thinking of how that transpired. It's like watching a movie and you have the really bad guy, and then he's got all these little minions. It's like, it's like you're watching Batman, and you have the Joker. And the Joker always has those little minions that run around. They're, they're all expendable. And you're always thinking, where does he get these guys? Right? How come he just has this endless supply of crazy idiots doing his bidding for him? And yet, that's what Hitler had. You couldn't have done that without some sort of intelligence. Now, saying that doesn't make you a sympathizer with anything that he did. On the contrary, I, I wish it never happened. You see, acknowledging intelligence is about understanding our enemy correctly so that we can either stop them in the present or keep from these terrible things happening again and repeating from our past. That's what Trump does. Understanding intelligence with your enemies helps you understand how to not, how to be able to stop them or not repeat things from the past. Okay, so moving on. When did Trump ever say he was going to be a dictator? I, I was thinking this the other day, because I keep hearing Democrats saying this. Well, he said he's going to... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't... <laughs> I, I need to remember my liberal voice. 
He said he was like going to be like a dictator on like day one. And so he's like, he's like going to be like a dictator. And he said he was going to be like on day one. So I was thinking, wait, I had to do my research on this because I was thinking, when did he ever say this? I found it. I found it. It was a, it was an interview he gave with Sean Hannity. Another great American hero, Sean Hannity. I like Sean Hannity. But Hannity was interviewing him. Listen here. Under no circumstances, you are promising America tonight. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Except Look, one. He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border and I want to drill. That's drill, not a that's, drill. That's not no, no. that's not retribution. I got I'm gonna be I'm gonna be, you know, he keeps <laughs> we love this guy. He says, You're not gonna be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. We're closing the border and we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that I'm not a dictator. So that, okay? that, that sounds to me like you're going back to the policies when you were president. <laughs> okay. That's, that's the, that's the except for day one comment that he made. You going to be a dictator? No, except for day one, I will. Uh, What does he mean by that? Because here's what he, what he named of the things that he was going to do isn't dictator stuff. He's going to. Close down the border, and he will. I, I know Trump. He'll be able to close the border with the sign, with his signature, within, within days. Illegal immigra- immigration across the border will stop within days with his signature. And same thing Biden could do, but he doesn't want to for some reason. Maybe the pen's too heavy. I don't know. But. So he wants to close the border. That's not a dictator thing. That's actually. That's actually a real president thing. Because constitutionally we should have safe borders. Okay. The other thing he wants to do is drill, drill, drill. Do you know why? Because Biden canceled a lot of the drilling in America as soon as he got in office. He closed down so much that tens of thousands of people lost jobs immediately when Biden took office because he closed all that drilling. And all it did was it made us go to foreign nations for oil. People who don't even like us. All of a sudden, now we're having to talk to people who don't like us to give us oil. Have you ever wondered why your gas prices are high? It's because Biden canceled a lot of the contracts they had and a lot of the permits they had for drilling domestically. This is real. Okay, so Trump says he's going to be a dictator on day one. Do you know... Why he said that? Because he's making fun of Biden. That's why. All the media is out there up in arms about, oh, Trump's going to be a dictator on day one. The comment he made was actually making fun of Biden. Here's why. In Biden's first, this is CNN politics, Uh, This article is April 30th, 2021. Biden had been in office about 100 days. In his first 100 days in office, Biden signed more than 60 executive actions. 60 in the first, that's executive orders. 24, which are a direct reversals of Trump's policies. Huh. Okay. So let's hear what some of these executive actions were that he signed in the first 60 days. 
they immediately halted the funding of Trump's border wall. Now, keep in mind, this is Biden's first hundred days in office. So they're still excited about Biden being president. So all of the all of this, this article, they're all talking like this is all good stuff. It's funny to it's funny to read it with hindsight, seeing how nothing panned out the way they thought it would. Anyway. They halted funding for the construction of Trump's border wall, reversing Trump's travel ban targeting largely Muslim countries, imposing a mask mandate on federal property. Hmm. Imposing a mask mandate. See, they're still thinking that that's a good thing. And if you, if you like, if you still like wearing masks, well, you can, you can go die because that's the worst. Ramping up vaccination supplies was another few of his executive orders that he signed in the first hundred days. Canceling the Keystone Pipeline. Canceled it. That was day one. Canceled the Keystone Pipeline. And then ending the use of private prisons and reversing Trump's ban on transgender Americans joining the military. So now you can have transgender join the military, whatever. Um, That doesn't, it's not the worst. In, okay, so the first hundred days, although (laughs) I guess if I was in the military, it would bother me. If anyway, we have other programs dedicated to transgender. We're not going to go into it here. So 24 of the, of the executive orders that Biden had signed were direct reversals of Trump's policies. Now Biden defended the number as necessary Because guess what? 60 executive actions? 60? Yikes. Just in contrast, Trump signed 24 executive orders in the first 100 days of office. 24. As opposed to Biden's 60. That's 6-0. Now, he defended the number as necessary to undo what he considers, quote-unquote, bad policy inherited from Trump, especially on immigration. (laughs) To date, 10 of his 12 actions on immigration are reversals of Trump's policies. Hmm. Okay, so actions on immigration, reversing Trump's policies. Now, looking at this three years down the road, knowing what we know now, seeing how terrible, catastrophically horrible immigration has become, yikes, you probably should have kept some of them some of Trump's policies because Trump actually did okay with it. I know, he, I know the Democrats badmouth it, but it's not uh, all of his policies as being so terrible. They weren't. So Trump was okay on, on immigration and he was actually doing a really good job. And you know what? I think the wall is a good idea. I think we need it. I have no problem as no one does, has any problem with people coming here legally. Great. I love it. The more, the better. The more, the merrier. Let's have immigration. Having open borders keeps us unsafe. See, we have no idea who and what is coming in. Okay, so 
He reversed all of Trump's immigration policies and and did nothing with it. Well, until now, there's an election coming up, so we better do something. It's it's crazy. It's 60, okay, so Biden signed 60 executive orders, 60. And at the time, in the first 100 days, Trump kept kept talking about how that's a lot. That's a lot of executive orders being signed. A hundred days? That's a lot of executive orders in a hundred days. So Trump talked about how Biden was a dictator using executive action to dictate to the people what he wanted to accomplish. Now we all know that this isn't Biden. He's just given papers and then he signs them. We're, we all know that he's not sitting there writing. He's not thinking about this. He's just, it's given to him. But Trump talked a lot in that hundred days about how that many executive actions is what dictators do. That's what he did. That's what Trump talked about. So when Trump says... I'm going to be a dictator on day one because I am going to do two things. I'm going to sign an executive order to close the border. And I'm going to sign an executive order to open our drilling back up. That's it. Now, when he calls that him being a quote unquote dictator, he's making fun of Biden. He's making fun of the 60 executive orders signed in the first 100 days. More than any other president. You know that? So, I find that so funny. That the media has latched on to this, well, I'm going to be a dictator on day one, when all he's doing is making fun of Biden. Because he's saying... I'm going to sign two executive orders on the first day. And then, and then from there, we'll see what happens. And he was referencing a signing executive orders as being a dictator. Exactly like what he used to say about Joe Biden. Anyway, they're very interesting how the media just doesn't under, they don't get it. They don't get it. I, I, I don't see why they don't get it. But they don't. He, um, Trump knows exactly what to say and when to say it so that he can get the media all involved And lately, he's been taking 80% of free media from the liberals who are trying desperately to find something to attack him about. And they're playing right into his hands. It's hilarious. Here's a clip. I found this clip. What you're about to hear is... The Morning Joe, possibly, possibly the worst show on television. I, uh, well, I, I, you know what? No, 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 no. Let's, let's use it this way. I think that it's an inspiration. The show, The Morning Joe is an inspiration for all of us. Because if those idiots can have their own show, then the sky's the limit for all of you. Go follow your dreams because there is no limit to what you can achieve if those idiots can have their own show. Anyway, the first you're going to hear is the Morning Joe. 
It's a dumb name even. Cow. Sorry. I, uh, I don't mean to be so rude. But they talk about Trump being a dictator and they say, well, is he going to be a dictator? And this, this piece of it is very small. It's short. But they'll say, they say, well, he has his record to show for it. His record. His record tells him, it tells all of us that he's going to be a dictator. When has Trump ever been a dictator? So the first short little clip is Morning Joe talking about how his record proves that he's going to be a dictator. And then followed up by a conversation they had about this on Newsmax. Just have what he's saying. You have now a record. Can you imagine that they can just go on TV and say this stuff? I mean, listen, these people have lost their mind. They're acting as if Donald Trump wasn't already president once. He was president. Was the Constitution uh, terminated? No. Did he go after political rivals? He actually did not do that. What he did do was protect this nation, lead us to one of the greatest economies we've seen in the history of our nation. He secured our southern border, and he actually created for the first time in a long time semblance of peace in the Middle East and peace around the globe. Joe Biden is the one who is destroying our institutions. He is the one who is ignoring our founding documents. He is the one who's leading America into decline. If you watch Morning Joe every morning, you would never know about it. No. Enough said. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. You see, Trump has already been president. He wasn't a dictator then. He's not going to be a dictator now. He's just going to help America, just like he did the time before. So what is a dictator? Now, a lot of people are pointing to Trump saying the word bloodbath. If I'm not elected, there's going to be a bloodbath. Now, he was talking about the loss of jobs in the auto industry. That's the metaphor he was using to describe the, 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 he was using the word bloodbath to describe the loss of jobs if he's not elected. And you know what? He's right. There will be a lot of lost jobs in the auto industry because he has a lot of really good plans in place to ensure America is economically sound, including the auto industry. So this is what he talks about. And the media just latched on. Bloodbath. I can't believe he'd say that. I can't believe he'd use the word bloodbath. Well, the real Donald Trump on Twitter, or X, posted, and on Instagram, posted a video of all the times the liberals in the past four years have used the word bloodbath. Now, before I play this, I want to apologize to you. By the time this clip is over, you will never, ever, ever, ever want to hear the word bloodbath again. So, I apologize now. In fact, I've listened to it so much in preparation for this show that the word bloodbath doesn't even sound like a real word anymore. So, bloodbath. I, 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 anyway, listen. To the liberal media over the past four years. .com reports tonight on the, quote, bloodbath at the RNC. Headlines calling it a, quote, bloodbath. A yeah, bloodbath. Not only is it going to be a bloodbath, but after they leave New Hampshire, it's a bloodbath on her home turf. That's really and tough. Trump has left a lot of corpses in his wake. I mean, we yeah. can count the bodies as part of the, quote, <laughs> MAGA drive to take over Maricopa County. And the headline refers to it as an impending bloodbath. Columnist Charles Blow has a new piece for the New York Times entitled A Biden Bloodbath. 2018 midterms. 
you can bet that they 100% are fearing a slaughter. In fact, the word bloodbath and massacre come up frequently. The Republican Party will be destroyed. It's going to be a bloodbath. There's going to be a bloodbath one way or the other. Bloodbath for Bernie Sanders. It's been a bloodbath. They're shaping up to be a bloodbath. Head off a bloodbath in next year's crucial midterm. Off-year elections are often a bloodbath. This week's bloodbath for Democrats. A bloodbath at the ballot box. There could be a Republican bloodbath. They'll talk about a bloodbath. There's a bloodbath. I have to talk about you. And LA, it's going to be a bloodbath all day long. Is it for a bloodbath? It hasn't been a bloodbath on the way down. Donald Trump bloodbath. be a bloodbath. Predicted to be a bloodbath. May not be the bloodbath. It would be a bloodbath. More of a bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath in November. Possible Biden bloodbath this November. A bloodbath on Wall Street. This can be a bloodbath in, in Alabama into a bloodbath. Obviously, there was a bloodbath. It was a bloodbath. We we're down 800 points. This bloodbath at Department of Homeland Security. And it's a bloodbath today. There was going to be this bloodbath. Election bloodbath. It, it could be a bloodbath for them. Bloodbath, possibly. Bloodbath that went through with the Attorney General. Bloodbath 99 days out. The bloodbath is going to look like presided over a bloodbath in the diplomatic corps. Absolute, in my opinion, blood blood. blood bloodbath the Democrats are calling it a ticket sales turn into a bloodbath. Ticket sales for singer Taylor Swift's latest tour. It's safe to say the fans had a, a bloodbath for the company after the fiasco. Again, I am so sorry. Bloodbath. It doesn't even sound like a real word anymore. So this is the metaphor that everyone uses I I find it, well, after listening to that, I find it to be pretty much the worst word ever. But Trump uses it as a metaphor of lost jobs. And the media loses their minds. They go nuts over this. Why? They've all said it. I don't know. So a dictator isn't necessarily one who uses the word bloodbath. So what? We've determined now that Trump is not going to be a dictator. He never was before. So what does make a dictator? Well, you know, I did some investigation on this. I looked into this. I would like to know what a dictator is. So here are some examples that I've come up with. In all of my extensive research, I've come up with a few examples. A dictator is one who would work with big tech to remove social media posts that they don't agree with. Hmm. That's, that's a dictator move. I don't, I don't like what you guys are saying on social media. So remember January 6th? We've talked about January 6th on this program. We had a whole show dedicated to it. And remember, we, people would post about January 6th. And the government was working with Twitter at the time. We know that because Elon Musk has blown the whistle on that. We know that because of uh, Zuckerberg testifying before Congress. We know that they were working with the FBI. So January 6th happens, and if anyone posted anything about January 6th, not only was there post removed but their account was suspended or deleted that's a dictator move absolutely 100% that's a dictator move another one I came up with was not letting parents speak out at school board meetings when they don't like what is being taught in their schools. Now remember this? Under the Biden administration, when parents were, this was just a couple years ago, parents were speaking out 
And the FBI was called in to some of these school board meetings? They had sheriff's cars out front because the parents didn't like what was being taught to their children. It wasn't violent. It wasn't a riot. There was no chaos. They simply were speaking out and saying, we don't want this taught. The parents and the government came down heavy, heavy. At one point, there were, there were many of the liberal media and even, even press conferences of, with the White House where they labeled these parents as, and I am not joking, quote unquote, domestic terrorists. Parents who just go to a school board meeting and say, quit teaching my children about how to be trans. And the government came down on them like a, a ton of bricks. Okay, well, that, that's a dictator move. You don't want to know one of the big ones? This was a big one. If you look up any dictators, this was a big one. Mandating vaccinations. Oh, well, that sounds familiar. Now, it didn't quite get to that with us, with COVID. Huh? It didn't quite get to mandated vaccinations. It did within the government. Oh, you either get vaccinated or you're going to lose your job. Okay. So government employees had to either quit or get vaccinated. Okay. But it was getting dangerously close to man. Uh, we were getting very close, dangerously close to mandating vaccinations with everyone you had it there was talk it was dangerously close to the government saying okay if you're not vaccinated you're not going to be able to travel you're not going to be able to go to the store you're not going to be able to go here or there you're not going to be able to go to concerts we were dangerously close to that that's dictator crap Having the government force us into vaccinations is dictator crap. That's what it is. Now, I, I'm actually in Utah. And it just, I knew people that got COVID. I even heard about people dying. I know. I'm not saying it was fake. You know what? But it definitely wasn't as bad as people thought it was, right? Trump, Trump compared it. Uh, this is interesting. Trump compared it to the flu. And everybody jumped down his throat. They just wanted him. They, they wanted. Uh, they just couldn't believe it. How could you ever compare it to the flu? This is COVID. The worst thing ever to have happen to us. Facebook removed his posts about it. They deleted posts. Threatened to, uh, Twitter banned him. And, uh, and this among election um, talk and things like that. So they, they wanted him banned. They wanted him to shut up about it being like the flu. It was just a couple of weeks ago. We had a, the CDC came out. It's official. This is from the Wall Street Journal. We can pretty much treat COVID like the flu now. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Donald Trump, for helping us see that very far in advance. Anyway, going back to that, I was, I'm in Utah and you know what? I never, I, I think I had COVID a couple of times, maybe 
I, because guess what? I get sick every year. And I know that there are people who are at higher risk and I made sure they were, I stayed away from people like that. I don't want anybody getting sick. There are people who are at high risk and I was very respectful of that. But I'll tell you, I never even had a single COVID test. Never did. Never even got tested. I don't even know what it's like to get a COVID test. You see, in highly populated areas around the country, especially, we've talked about this on the program before, somehow it got split right down the center of you got the liberals over here worried about COVID and you got the conservatives just wanting to move on. You're sick. So what? Get, get over it. Sometimes we die from being sick. It sucks. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you've lost loved ones. That sucks. But it's life. And it, unfortunately, we have to move on. So we've got conservatives wanting to move on. Democrats are wanting to drag this out. It was split right down the center somehow. Okay. So, in other parts of the world that weren't so heavily populated, it, it wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't. Like I said, I never even had a test. I'd get sick. I stayed away from everybody for about seven, you know, the like seven to fourteen days. I'd stay away because I don't, I, I don't want people to get sick because of me. But ultimately, I never even worried about it. And a lot of people, the majority of America, felt the same way. So what? We get sick. It sucks. Anyway. So, mandating vaccinations, we came dangerously close to that, folks. I, I can't even believe it. I can't even believe that in, oh, it was Biden. It was, it, it was Biden. He said, I remember seeing this press conference and he said, we've been patient, and this is a quote, we've been patient, and he's talking about those who haven't been vaccinated yet. But our patience is wearing thin. Go get your vaccination so that we don't have to force it. What? I mean, okay, there you go. That's a, that's a dictator for you. Someone who forces vaccinations. What else? Justice Department using the Justice Department to attack your political opponents. Really? Do I even have to go into this? The trials against Donald Trump right now are all fake, and, for, and, and they're not even real. They're just designed to take him down. But remember, and I heard this from Trump supporters, the more you indict, the more we unite. And I love it. It's it, he's like a martyr. The more the government comes down on him, the more trials he has, the more DAs that just want to make a name for themselves, the more judges that are smiling for the camera like they're they're they got their big break in Hollywood, the more this happens, the more popular he gets. Okay, you know that, okay, so that's a that's a dictator move. You know what else is a dictator move? Something that pff, has happened. This has happened in real countries where they have real dictators. Banning political opponents from the voting ballots. <laughs> that's that has actually happened. In countries where they have real dictators. Now in America, states banning political opponents from the ballot is completely unconstitutional. And it took the Supreme Court to tell us that. 
Why did it take the Supreme Court to tell us that? You could have come up to me. Of course, I'm a genius, though. This program is a genius because guess why? Because we use logic. And logic tells us that if you walked up to me and you said, hey, we're going to try to get Trump removed from the ballot. I would have looked at you and said, on a, as, on a state level? Yeah. Okay, well, you can't. It's unconstitutional. You can't. It's uh, something like that could only be done through Congress. United States Congress. States don't have that right. It's pretty clear in the, in the 24th Amendment that that is, it's, it's right there. So why did it take the Supreme Court to tell us that? All of these scholars and the, you know, you've got Supreme Court justices and Secretary of who knows what in the States. And they didn't know that? Nobody stopped to actually just read the Constitution? Anyway, removing political opponents from the ballot. That's a dictator. Now, everything that I have said in all of these examples are things the Democrats have been doing for the past four years. And and longer. I Look... The Democrats have been at this with their shenanigans for <laughs> decades. For decades, they've been trying desperately to do this, to, to get their... And, but what's funny is they've been trying to get their, their claws into America enough that we just can't, we can't get rid of them anymore. You can no longer vote them out because it's just too, they're too intertwined with society. That's what they've been wanting. And they've been trying desperately. But it's funny, every time, every time that happens, every time everybody goes, oh, I hate Republicans. I hate Trump. Let's vote in a Democrat. They always regret it. (laughs) Every time. And maybe, maybe that could be said for the other side too. Every time, I, and I could, I can see that case being made for everyone. I could see some people saying, "I regret voting for Donald Trump." We went over that in a previous program. Listen to it. Listen to all of our programs because they're all good. But we went over that. They. Yeah, there are a lot of people who have been jumping ship, jumping the Trump ship, saying, hey, I'm done with Trump. I'm out of here. And so they pull a Mitt Romney because they got their feelings hurt. Anyway, so that's a dictator. That's a dictator for you. So where do we go from here? I mean, you got people talking about Trump being a dictator. Is he, uh, is he really a dictator? No. And when he was in office, he never showed any signs of being a dictator. He never showed signs of it. And on that terrible note, I am going to leave you for today. Just remember to like us, subscribe, love us. We're here for you. We are going to continue to talk logically so that logic is never a problem or a dilemma. I'm American Mike. For the logic dilemma, thank you, America. Stay strong.